Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I am a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. The journey continues today on July 16, 2022 at approximately 6.11 p.m. PST. Well, you know, we talk about change. We talk about the whole idea of change. And then we go, now, where do we begin? Well, where we begin is right where you are, right here, right now. This is the one thing that everybody in existence has in common. Okay, now I return to, into this world for one primary reason. And that is to remind everyone in existence that working together, we can make this a better world for virtually everyone. Okay, now, there will be people that will be upset. There is no question there. Now, the reason I build myself as a spiritual guide is because the tools I offer are the exact same tools I personally put to use. Okay, the philosophies of life I talk about are the ones that I actually live by. Okay, this is not a question of going, you know, you should help your neighbor and me going, let's have, you know, give me all the money. That's not the way it works. Okay, now there's a couple of ground, uh, there's a couple of simple baseline philosophies. I only follow three laws. Now, you know, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Apparently it has something to do with the, with the algorithm for this thing as well. I do not like relying on technology very much, at least not modern technology. Now here's the thing. This is technically technology. Okay. But if you're going to take your world and turn it back into something that you can be happy with, that you can be proud of, it has to start here. Well, technically it starts here, up in the up in the spiritual realm. Okay. Now the thoughts start up here. You, you can call it God, you can call it the universe, call it Gaia, call it a tomato sandwich, it doesn't matter. Okay, I like the way that Shakespeare put it. You know, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. The funny thing with roses is centuries ago, I think, roses were considered a weed. Now don't just take my word for it. Okay, for pity's sakes, that's my understanding but do your own research. Okay, now you look at, I'm, I split the I split life into three, into three parts. Your, yourself, your home, which is a feeling of where you're living, and the house, which is the physical place you're living in. Okay, it's kind of like mind, body, soul. I mean, there's, there's a whole lot of connections. But here's the thing, from my standpoint, if we're going to change your physical world, understanding money is not the root of all evil. and But what it can do, a friend of mine, well, he wasn't a friend of mine, a chap I was talking to one day. He goes, he goes, you know, I've been miserable rich. I've been miserable poor. He says, hands down, I would rather be miserable rich. He also brought to my attention that money will not buy happiness. Take a look at the number of millionaires out there that have that seem to have everything in their hands. Okay, I will tell you most of what they own, and do your own research. Don't take my word for it. Okay, I can look at it from a personal standpoint and go, it looks like I'm doing really well. I've got a brand new car. Okay, but the thing you got to remember about that brand new car is I am renting it from the from the from the auto dealer. Okay, I haven't paid for it, so I don't own it. You own something when you no longer have to pay for it. Okay, now, that being said, you're all in the same boat. You're all right here, right now. We all are. I'm no better than you are. I just have a different way of looking at the world. Okay, now, we also have another thing in common. Every single one of you is going to die. Okay, and it won't matter who you will vote for. It won't matter how much you have. It won't matter the stuff you've got or who you've been sleeping with or how many people you've been sleeping with. It won't make one iota of difference what your skin color is, what you identify it as. You're going to die. And the reality is you're not taking your physical material with you. You're not taking the goods with you. 
okay, all you've got, because it's been tried. 5,000 years ago, and you'd think that mankind got the message in 5,000 years. The pharaohs of ancient Egypt thought that they could take their stuff with them. So they buried all their goods with them in the tombs, in the pyramids. And here we are 5,000 years later, still opening up new tombs and finding not one of these people is still alive. And yet all the stuff they left behind is still there. Your material world is not going with you. So what do you do with it? If you're not content with your life, it's up to you to change it. Now talk to the people that are around you. Turn to the people around you to find the ones that have done it successfully. Now, I've sat back, you know, quite seriously. When I look at the material world, let's start with the first thing. The fun, at least we'll start at this point. It may not be the most important, but we'll start at this point. Take wherever you work on your money. Get that in order. Okay. Now, I'm still very much old, old school. Okay. This funny little thing. Some of you will recognize it. Some of you won't. Okay. But this funny little thing. It's called a tabletop. You know, it's a tabletop calendar. Some of you use them. I still do. Okay. At the beginning of it, I write down what I've got in the bank. In each bank account. Okay. Now, I've only got three I have to worry about. Well, that's not entirely true. Yeah, I know I'm moving around a bit today. Things are a little different from my standpoint. So what I did was I just finished, at the beginning of the month, I figured out how much money was in which bank account. Now, the thing is this. When you're looking at getting ahead, you take a look at your bank account at the beginning of the month. If at the end of the month it is one penny higher than what it was, okay, then you are in good shape. Now, I should have done the calculation before, and I don't know what I did with it, so I'm not going to worry about it. Take a look at where your finances are. If you're in one penny better shape, now this is just a rough gauge. 25.70, we got 5.50 there. We've got 700 there. So, and then we have four. So, I am right now, at this point... And this is just a rough gauge. Here we are, the middle of the month. I am eight hundred dollars lower than what I was than what I was at the beginning of the month. But today is the sixteenth, so in you know, in before the end of the month, I have an additional coming in before the end of the month. Okay, I have an additional, roughly speaking. What do we got? Eight, thirteen, probably another two grand. Now, this is not to make you feel better. It's not to make me seem like I've got everything together. I spent the majority of my life living one paycheck from being on the street. Now, some of you have been in a lot worse shape, but we are all in the same point right now. Right here, right now. Okay, so I've got, and yeah, I'm making my notes for myself while I'm doing this. And by the way, this is a live recording, meaning... I don't change anything. I double check, make sure I got the date right, and then carry on from there. Okay, now, okay, I've got what I have to start tracking, and I've, I've got to do this before today. Okay, I'm doing this. As soon as I get done posting this, this video, I've got to go in, take a look at where my one credit card is sitting, and take a look at where my bank and my PayPal account is sitting. That way I've got a starting point. Okay. This way I can look at it and put it all together by the end of the month. I will know if I am ahead of where I should have where I was. And you do that every single month. Okay. Now, when when is the best time to start changing your life? Right now. And here's why. Even if you're a professional procrastinator like I used to be, as in never do today what you can put off. Well, in my case, I went never do what you can put off. That worked really well. Bankrupt twice. Had my health shocked to pieces. Uh, okay, today my life is changing. 
not it's going to change. And, you know, whether you pray to God, whether you pray to the universe, whether you pray to the gods, as in plural, whether you pray and pray to Satan, it doesn't matter if you pray to Gaia, the tree. Pray to whoever you find comfort in. Okay, I am not the one to tell you that, you know, that one, that one label for a god is more important than another one. I'm not one to tell you that one way of one diet or one type of person to be with is right for everybody. It's not. As my father used to put it, it would be a real boring place in this world if everybody were identical. Okay, now I have an interesting situation. I am an individual. You're an individual. Guess what? The biggest names in the world are individual people. They still will have the same problem. In time, they will die. And the question is not, are you going to die? Okay, it's not, you know, you're taught to fear how you die. Brilliant idea. Works, works great. Let's worry about how we're going to die instead of how we're going to live. Okay. Now, my parents yeah, did their best with me. Okay, they really did. But I'll tell you, the biggest problem I ran into is I didn't pay attention. That's not on them. If you didn't listen to your parents, and this is assuming your parents are not beating the stuffing out of you or telling you're less valuable than they are. Okay, that's not the way this works. Okay, you know, there, there's a rule, there is a, a, um, there is a commandment in the Bible, in the Bible, in the Christian Bible that says, you know, you know, honor thy mother and thy father. And that's a great idea. But here's the catch. And this is what they don't tell you. If your mother and your father are not honoring you, why, pray tell, would you possibly honor them? That said, if you desire honor from them, show responsibility. Take responsibility for your life. You're the one that can change it. Okay. If I'd have listened to that aspect years ago, I'd have been in a lot better shape. But I tend to call myself a slow learner, okay? But I'm not better than or worse than anybody else. I'll tell you, I run into problems with my computer. I can talk to my other half, and the reality is she's blind. But she understands technology better than I do. Therefore, mind you, that's in the bar low. That being said, if I have a problem, you if you've got a problem with something you don't understand, talk to somebody that does. Now, here's a neat little kicker to it. I finally, after 15 years of being in business, went, it's time to change. It's time to take my material world and grow it. So here's what I'm doing to make sure that happens. I'm not blaming anybody else. I'm not going to turn to the government and go, oh, I, you know, I, they should be doing this for me. Okay, if I really desire the government, or if you really desire the government to change, get into office and do your do the work inside the system. Yes, the system it, the system itself is frankly, in my opinion, it is not broken. The people running the system are the problem. Now, this does not mean overthrow anybody. Okay, there is a positive way to do this. If you don't like the laws the way they are, start running for office. Now, am I likely to run for office ever? I wouldn't hold my breath. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't agree with the, with the amount of, of stuff that is done. I don't agree with a lot of it. But I will tell you, and I was asked this this morning, I will tell you where it comes to law enforcement. If a law is written down, in society you have to have laws. Okay, but the problem is that these laws have to apply to everybody. So the tools I'm about to give you here are tools that apply to everybody. It won't matter if you've got a dollar in your pocket or if you've got a hundred million dollars in your pocket, although I'd like that kind of a pocket. Okay, money is not the root of all evil. Greed, actually in all fairness, fear is the root of all evil. Love is the root of all good. And you have to have good and evil 
in order to be able to choose which one you're going to be. And it's that balance point that brings things into a stable fashion. Okay. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you. Well, I could tell you all, thing, all sorts of things I'm not going to do. I'll let you figure out what I'm not going to tell you. Okay. But I will tell you that one person, as in, in this case, me, I am not going to change this entire world on my own. Okay. I mean, we can look at the Christian side and go, well, everybody said Jesus came down here to forgive us of our sins. And he did. I have no question of that. Okay. But here's the kicker. He came down here to forgive you and forgive mankind for the sins they'd already done. He didn't tell you, okay, go out and do whatever you please. Have a happy, I'm, you know, I've died once, that's good. That ain't the way this works. It's time to take responsibility for your actions. Are you treating the people the way you desire to be treated? Now, I only follow three laws. Be true to yourself first. Do unto others as you desire them to do unto you. And energy out, energy in. Okay, now if you compare the laws you follow, wherever you get your guidelines from, compare them to those three. And I do believe you'll find that, you're, that whatever laws you're following, whatever guidelines you've got to run your life, they will fit inside those three. If you find one that doesn't, please, I'm asking you, drop me a line in the comments below or drop me a personal note. Okay. Now I mentioned something and something to somebody. Okay, I'm going through I'm going back through the whole nine yards to figure out exactly where I'm starting where I'm standing. This is not to figure out how I got to where I got. Okay. No I'm not trying to figure out, oh, how did I get in the mess I'm in? That ain't the way to do it. Okay. How you got to where you are is not really as critical a factor as how you're gonna move forward. Okay, now there's a saying that goes, those that don't know history are doomed to repeat it. What they don't tell you is those that dwell on history are going to do exactly the same thing. Okay, they are going to turn around and go, you know, this is what we focused on before, so let's keep doing that because that's working well. Okay, in case you hadn't noticed, society is taking a massive turn for, quite frankly, the worse. People are lazier. They're greedier, they're more short-sighted. If you don't believe me, take a look at the world around you. How many people do you know? I, I saw a picture on, on um, Facebook the other day. Okay, it says, you know, it was a picture of three teenage boys, well, older teenager, younger adult, you know, late teens, early 20s by their appearance. Okay. They were standing there, and this was, and they said this was in the, I think it was either the 1950s or 1960s. And it says, here's how the kids used to spend their, their weekends. They'd be leaned over, them, over an engine, working on the engine. Okay, they'd be outside doing things. Okay, and, and then it shows three guys about the same age sitting on the couch, playing video games. Okay, and it says, Here's how the kids today are spending their time. And, you know, the sad part about it is, like they said, kids today can't even change, I uh, can't even change, change tire. Well, I'm an odd example. Even back in the, in, back in the 60s and 70s when I was younger. Okay, I couldn't do it then either. I do not make any bones about it. My strength is not in my, in mechanical stuff or in computer tech. Okay, I'll tell you where I feel my strength is. In spotting a flaw and then deciding whether or not to do something with it. Now, being a professional procrastinator has really hindered things, but I have to make that choice. And you've got to make that choice. If you're not content with the way your life is, you're the one that's going to have to get up and do something about it. To that end, I've gone through, my, through the three accounts I've got on track. Okay, and I'm just doing it in a basic fashion, because if you can figure out where you're standing, you can figure out what you're not content with, and that's the key to happiness, right there. It is not this issue of bombard yourself with all the news that says, oh, look who's dying, look who, look who ripped who off. I'll tell you, you surround yourself with that kind of stuff, you're going to dwell on it. Okay. Ever notice if you listen to really, really, really sad songs for too long, you start feeling really lethargic, 
really depressed. You want a, you want a cure for, for depression? Okay. Now, I call it a cure because I've never seen it not work. Okay. Find the fastest dan dance paced music you can find. Crank it as high as socially acceptable and let it run. That increase in vibration is going to affect your mood in a positive fashion. Okay. You desire your world to run more smoothly. It's time to get rid of the junk. You're not taking the material with you anyway. Okay. What you can leave behind is you can leave behind a legacy. You can leave behind when people go and when people die, ask yourself this. When you die, are people going to go, oh, this is what he did. You know, this is why I, I enjoyed being around him. Okay. There are waitresses out there, like I've met people that have been working in the industry, and the way they treat you makes a difference. Okay, ask yourself this. If you're treated decently by a waitress, are you going to remember her name or his name more readily than if you're treated just blasé? You know, there's a song from the 70s, that, in 1973, from the Carpenters, called Up, Up With People. It would be advisable to listen to this. Okay, now I am not promoting, I do not say these uh, that the Carpenters were the best band in the world. I'm telling you that one song had a massive message of great importance. Okay, now you've got to take a look at your world and decide whether you're content with it as is. If you are not, you are the one that's going to have to change it. You can blame anybody you want, but I will tell you, the only thing you can, the, the only thing you've got control over is your life. In correction, you, you've got control over how you act, how you say things, and what you do. You do not have control over what anybody else does. Okay, if you are not happy with the way a government is running, get up and do something about it. Okay, and yeah, it's kind of like, you know, Oh, I'm such a small thing. You know, I'm such a small person. I'm one person. What can I do? Well, I'll tell you. My dad used to work search and rescue. Now, my dad, in search and rescue, somebody made a mistake up in the North Country. And he and what had happened was they were going through the high country. And whoever the engineer was, clearly he was a rookie. Because he blew the, the, the train whistle in the middle of rutting season. A roughly 1,600 pound moose, okay, an animal that does not build anything, took that as a challenge and dropped his head. That tiny little 1,600 pound animal stood in front of this massive, ma massive mechanical construction that man made and went, I'm a little thing, but that's annoying me, okay. The moose took it as a challenge and derailed a 25 train car train. Okay, now that's what a little person can do. Okay, I was traveling traveling along in a car now. Car, you know, 1,500 pounds, I don't know, I'm guessing. Okay, I hit a squirrel. Now this is decades back. Okay, and I nearly put my car in the ditch. We're talking about a six ounce squirrel. And a 1,500 pound car. Now, you may be small, but you can move mountains. But you're not going to do it all at once. Okay, you're going to do it one step at a time. So let's get started on the one step at a time, shall we? Take a look at your bank. And we'll start there with the easy part. Don't worry about all the rest of it. I've talked about a lot of things and it all comes together. Take a look at what's in your bank. Okay. Now, this will apply to people, and this apply, will apply more effectively to the working poor. Okay, the working poor and anybody above. If you have to be living on the street, hey, bad news, odds are you're not listening to me. Okay, but I am going to ask those of you that are listening to me now to turn around, to, and to actually turn around and talk to the people around you. Talk to the people on the street. Yes, many of them are drug addicts, and use your common sense. Okay, that's an oddity. Uh, common sense seems to be a little bit lacking lately. But be cautious. When we say don't talk to strangers, another piece of bad news. Your own children, when they were first born, 
they were strangers to you, and you were a stranger to them. Now picture how well that would have worked if you didn't talk to them. I will, however, tell you, you know, telling your kids don't get too close to strangers, this makes sense. You have to have some sort of, of, of caution here. Fear is not a bad thing, but the fact is we're being taught to fear everything. So figure out what you've got in your bank. Okay. Now, if you're, this will work really well if you're working, you know, if you've got a roof over your head, you're just getting by. Now, there's lots of people out there that'll tell you, oh, if you've got $50,000, you can make this much money. I love the ones that tell you, here, give me, you know, give me 200 bucks and you can be a millionaire overnight or you can make $1,000 by the end of the, of the week, uh, by the end of the night. You know, you've seen these ads on, on Facebook and what have you. Where they tell you, you know, they go, oh, look, here's a shiny, flashy new car. Here's the thing about a flashy new car. Yeah, you can buy one. But I will tell you, I've had wrecks most of my life. The new car I'm driving, I still, it doesn't matter the price you paid for it. It's still only about 16, 20 inches of rubber that you have to, that makes the difference. It won't matter if you spent a million dollars on a car. You blow a wheel, that sucker's going to roll. Okay. Especially if you're doing too high a speed. So figure out where you're standing and understand. Like right now, I'm looking at my bank accounts. And like I said, at just first glance, I'm about $800 short. But I'll be able to compensate for that. But right now, I look at my bank, at my one bank account. It's full. Excuse me. This is a live recording, like I said. My, my bank account is right this moment $400 above what it was. Now, if I pay attention to what I'm doing, I won't break, I won't come below spending that $400, which means at the end of the month, I will be above what I require. Okay, I will be above what I started with. This means even if it's only one penny above, it's in better shape. Now, you see all this stuff around me. Okay. This is all, now I used to be a staggering pack rat. Okay, these these binders up here, these ones right here. Okay, that's the hard copy for the Elder Bakian Chronicles that I'm writing. Okay, I've got 13 books that I'm in the process of writing right now. Okay, and I keep looking at what do I have to do, so I'm racking them off, and just the other, just a couple of days ago, and I mentioned this the other day, this is the newest book that I've just put to print. Okay. Now, here's the thing. I am just a little person. Okay. Thank heavens I'm littler than I was a year ago. As in, I'm down about 40 pounds, and I'm, I've am i finally got it in my head how to make this all happen. Now, the reason I'm actually doing this at this point is to hopefully give you the guidance with tools that I know work because I'm using them. Okay. And rest assured, if they can work for me, they can work for you. But maybe, just maybe, I can reach one of you and go, okay, this is, you know, here's a tool that you can use to avoid the pitfalls I did. The best thing you can do for the people around you is if you've made a mistake, let them know, let people know what you've, what you've physically taken control of. For me, I'm laying the whole nine yards out. I've got my two, my one bank account is there. The other ones I have to bring up. But I will bring them up as quickly as I can. That's where my focus is, is to go, okay, here's where I am. I desire to be one step closer. Okay, one shelf clearer. And I'm just doing it one step at a time. One pound lighter. One step at a time will get you where you desire to be. Okay, now... That said, we're at the half hour mark here. I will be back again tomorrow. But until then, take care of yourselves and each other. And for pity's sakes, stay positive.